Hey folks, Happy New Year. So, uh, it's been a while. Uh, yeah, been a, a long rough and tumble year. Uh, shout out to Jim Katz for sending me out an email, checking up on me, and all those folks who saw or heard mention of me on uh, E-Waste Ben's video. Um, I, I don't know what happened to that video that I last posted in January. Um, my camera died and I thought I uploaded everything, um, but for some reason it got cut off, so hopefully by the time you see this, that will be edited and, um, and fixed. So yeah, so 2023, yep, I thought last year was going to be my last year on YouTube, um, but I ended up not doing much on YouTube at all. So this year I am going to be uh, trying to find the, the energy and ambition to do more. Um, I appreciate everyone who's been reaching out. I apologize if I don't respond much in the comments. You know, like I said, it's been a, been a long year. Um, ups and downs. But I've still been scrapping. Uh, mostly reselling, but uh, you know, some scrapping. Um, like in this video, I'm going to show you what I like to call the, uh, the little lottery tickets. Uh, these older scientific calculators. Um, they're, they're hit or miss. And, uh, you know, of course, if they still work, which this one does not, uh, you want to try and sell them on eBay. Although with the advent of the smartphones and the scientific calculator app on there, uh, they don't really sell quite as well, but uh, yeah, we'll take a look and see what's inside. If we're lucky, this will be one of the you know, golden ticket winners. All right, so I already took the uh, little steel backing off that. Uh, check it; it's magnetic, so it's not really not really worth anything. Scrap steel prices. Um, a lot of these things are just like laptops and cell phones. Tons and tons of screws. And by the time you're done taking it apart, you're looking at yourself saying, is that really worth it? Well, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, but you never know until you do it. Battery compartment here, which that screw is slightly stripped. You can tell this calculator has been used a lot because they've had to replace the batteries a few times. Um, Now this is a Radio Shack, <coughs> so Texas Instrument is, I've usually had better luck with, uh, but Radio Shack, they charge a lot for these things, or they did back in the day, so maybe, maybe we'll get lucky. If we can figure out how to pop that off, there's always a hidden screw somewhere. Oh, 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 there it is. All right. So we've got one IC chip there on the back, which is nice, and don't, no, nope. not a golden ticket winner. Sometimes you'll open these up and that whole board is like a, a nice cell phone board where it's all gold plated. This one is not. Oh, so we'll just grab that IC chip off the front and plastic, it's recycled. Plastic, it's recycled. Steel, it's recycled. <clears throat> and that's that. So, so yeah, it's been a year. Um, a lot of stuff going on. You know, I've, I apologize again for disappearing off the face of the planet, but I, I didn't. I'm still up here in Maine, weighing this side of the globe down. Um, made some changes. Been doing some different things. You know, I still have a, a friend who does cleanouts. And, um, <laughs> you know, it, it's always interesting, the whole resale side of it. I've got this, what I'm working on right now, part of it anyway, is uh, one of those pallets of store returns. So I've got a bunch of, you know, all the same thing, stereo, you know, CD players. Who the heck buys those anymore? A lot of random bits and pieces, a whole bunch of sound bars but they're the, the cheap Walmart brand, and they were returned, so who knows what's wrong with them. Um, 
Got a bunch of video game system lots here. <coughs> I get a lot of video game stuff um, from my friend. And a lot of the stuff, I get it incomplete. So I don't really have a way of testing it. So when I list it, typically on Facebook Marketplace, um, I will... It's an N64 in there. So I'll, I'll let them know that it's not tested. And, uh, but still, you know, I can still get decent money for it. You know, this is one of those PlayStation 3s that's backwards compatible. You know, Xbox One. I try to, um, I, I get my groceries and stuff delivered by Walmart. Uh, so I always get these bags. They're nice. They fold up really easy and flat. Uh, you can see a stack of them over there in the middle. Um, but yeah, so I use them to sort out, you know, like this is antique stuff, you know, like the original Atari plug-in pong system. There's also um, in there one of those antique uh, Coleco shooting games, which is it's just shooting. You know, Xboxes, Xbox 360, Xbox One, PlayStation 2s, or PlayStation 2s. You know, it's all things that, you know, you group it up, and then you post it, and see what happens. Uh, I mean, this is all stuff that this guy is getting paid to just throw in the trash, so you know, if we can make a few extra bucks on it, I get half, he gets half. Everyone's happy. Look at that. Full box of television games. When's the last time you saw those? With the original boxes and everything. Yeah. So I've got that going on. I've got a stack of laptops here. But uh, I'm actually... <laughs> uh, just to give you an idea of my mindset with certain scrapping things lately. Uh, I'm actually paying my daughter to take these apart because <laughs> the number of screws just gets frustrating and you know I've got so many other things that I'm, I'm trying to do um, but yeah so there's that I uh, uh, so dirty moose what they call the garage is still Right now it's it's fairly clean and empty, but it wasn't like that not that long ago. Uh, had a recent load from uh, one of my big um, uh, e-waste suppliers that was hopeful was going to be profitable, but it really wasn't. Um, I tend to do well reselling like RAM and CPUs and things like that, but all the RAM in this batch was outdated. I mean, there were 32 gigabyte sticks, but they were PC3 or PCL3, and now everyone's looking for the fours and fives. So, didn't make hardly anything off of that, which was kind of a bummer. I mean, I do rely a bit on you know, this side of, I mean, I have a regular nine to five, but I re rely a lot on this stuff for, you know, paying the bills. Um, yeah, got rid of my tool chest. And I have this system here, which is kind of nice. You know, the tools that I really use more often. And then, you know, sorting bins. For, you know, flat packs and CPUs. I just sold a bunch of them on eBay to, to get rid of them. And then I keep all my, my fun stuff in here. Like all the gold trim fingers. Uh, Another jar in there. Yeah, I like those. I'm addicted to peanut butter. Um, as some of you can probably tell by my waistline. Um, but these containers are really great for things like that. Like the, the trim fingers. Um, you wash them out and then you can put a whole bunch in there. And they usually fit you know, like one to two pounds, which is you know, the, the perfect amount to process at one time because if any of you have seen my video on, um, sorry for saying um so much, it's been a while, I'm out of practice. So if any of you have seen my video where I took that bucket and processed five pounds of plate, uh, trim fingers all at once, it was, the cleanup was a big process. And it's, if you can avoid that, 
avoid it. Um, my preference now is to run smaller batches. So, yeah, I guess that's it. So, what, uh, what I'm going to be doing this year, and it's been such a crazy mild winter, I'm hoping that it continues and we have an early spring and I can get, you know, the old Devil Forge out, start smelting some bars again. I have a huge, huge barrel filled with copper that needs to be melted. And I'm going to be posting some other videos, hopefully, uh, on some other random things. Such as these stacks of motors. I've got different ones here. And, you know, it's figuring out which ones are worth taking apart and which ones aren't. Uh, I've got some of the older motors, which are 99% of the time worth taking apart because you're going to have copper windings. Uh, but I've also got a jacuzzi motor in there. My local scrapyard, they actually uh, are refusing to buy motors if they are from dishwashers, washing machines, dryers, uh, because the windings in them are now all aluminum. So they're kind of like getting screwed. Uh, but like on this one, this old Craftsman motor, that came off of a vintage table saw. You can see the windings in there are copper. Um, so yeah, totally worth taking apart. Um, the jacuzzi one though, I'm not quite sure because jacuzzis, pool, pool motors, uh, I've never really taken one apart. So that's going to be like a first for this channel, but, you know, and actually the first thing that's unique in a long time, uh, taking that apart, but that's going to be a project for another day. Um, and question for you folks. I'm going to ask you guys for a little help with this. Apple products. I get all kinds of old iPads and iPhones, um, but they're all locked. And I can't really do anything with them. There's really... There really isn't a whole lot of precious metal in them for the hassle it is to take them apart. Uh, I tried selling them on eBay for parts, but there weren't really very many takers and a lot of people accused me of stealing them uh, because they were locked like well they were in homes that were foreclosed on and someone cleaned it out because they were paid to by the bank and then they ended up in my garage or whatever I, uh, I, I don't know how to prove otherwise so just kind of you know, gave up on them so if any of you guys and, and they're not they're all like iPad 1s and 2s and older iPhones, so I tried looking at some of those websites that buy back pieces, um, and they weren't offering anything. So if you guys have any information on that, that would be much appreciated. Put it down there in the comments. Um, yeah. Just lots and lots of stuff that I need to do. Not enough time to do it in. And... Yeah, so this is kind of a hi, I'm back video, hopefully. Uh, mm, yeah. Oh, I made it to uh, I made it big time. <clears throat> I'm, I'm I'm now YouTube famous because I I was briefly on a big stack decasting video, which kind of made my day, and. Uh, is partially, <laughs> partially what helped kind of, you know, stimulate me back into the whole YouTube video thing. Um, because, I mean, you know, over 300 some odd videos, what else is there to scrap? You know, otherwise it's just listening to me ramble, like I'm doing right now. But, um, yeah, so a package that I sent to uh, Big Scrap Decasting back in 2020, finally cleared customs over there, I guess in Australia and it was I mean he had these crates of fan mail and stuff that he was opening up and because he's the one who kind of you know piqued my interest and got me doing the, the whole Devil Forge smelting copper bars and that kind of stuff I sent him my number ones for copper and aluminum um, so if you watch his video his most recent one at the end of that you'll see my little bars that I mailed out to him um, and I guess that's it for now. So I will chat with you later. I will try and fix that video that was posted in January 
if I can find the rest of it, whatever happened, that camera died. Uh, so I wasn't able to use it. I tried using my phone and that just wasn't a good idea. Um, so yeah. So thanks for watching. And see y'all in the next one. Well, there she is. Here's my old camera. Yep, poor thing. Lasted 10 years. I hate to say goodbye, but goodbye. So, I just recorded this, but my new camera shut off, so I'm not sh I think I have to do it again. Um, something I'm going to be focusing on this year as well is the resale side of scrapping, which is by far the more profitable side of scrapping. And uh, it's something that if you're not doing now, it'll definitely you know beef up your income if you do. Uh, this is my office space and my daughter's closet because, you know, girls got to have clothes. Um, so, yeah, so in here, it's... I, bah. <laughs> I just recorded this like five minutes ago that my camera shut off, so it's remembering what I have to repeat. So over here, I've got... So all those brown boxes are laptops. Um... Anything that I can make $30 on or more, I will try and sell on eBay. Uh, the boxes and packing tape and bubble wrap and stuff like that I get from Uline, which is, um, it's, it's a little pricey, but it, it's all good quality stuff. These boxes are really rigid, so they help protect the laptops. Um, but everything, I, I, I'll sell everything. I mean, these bags are all filled with computer power supplies, like laptop power supplies. So I get large quantities of them. So what I'll do is I'll separate them out by, by brand, by type, and post them in lots on eBay and make money that way. I mean, just one, two, three shelves right there. That's about five grand worth of stuff listed on eBay. Um, these little RAM trays are priceless. I get them on eBay. Uh, sorry, not eBay. Um, Amazon. And, you know, when you get, like, the servers I get sometimes, I'll have, like, you know, three or four or five hundred sticks of, of RAM. And these are great for sorting them out and all the same type. And um, it's, when you sell them, it's nice to have them in containers like that because they're, you know, they're durable. They protect them during shipping. Anti-static, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, so I've got all that. I'm hoping to list all of that tomorrow and maybe some of this stuff. Um, this is also where I test out laptops if I can. Those do not make the cut, so those are going to get scrapped. Um, more power supplies, and I mentioned earlier that guy, that uh, friend of mine that does cleanouts, and he had uh, he found a, someone who must have bought a, a store return pallet, uh, like you know how Amazon sells it, but I think it was from Walmart. So I pulled off, you know, some things that I can try and sell on eBay. You know, again, you know, I look at what I can make on it versus you know, what they're you know, what they're going to charge me. Because eBay has, you know, their fees. Plus now on eBay you have to pay taxes, uh, so you get a 10.99 every year. So what I do is I make sure that anything that I sell, I can sell for at least thirty dollars or more. So if that means making things into a lot, uh, like the power supplies, I'll create lots of 10, sell them for anywhere from 50 to to $100, and, and go from there. That makes it easier to, to track, easier to manage, easier in every sense for me anyway. So yeah, so I'm going to be doing a lot of that this year on this channel. Lots of uh, eBay stuff. Uh, I just, and it, it, it's, it's fun because it, it takes a little bit of time, uh, but it, it's fun because I notice that like usually on weekends is when I have some available time. I'll post a few things the last like three or four weeks. On like Sunday, I'll post, you know, anywhere from five to ten items, and before I'm done posting, something's selling, so it's kind of nice. Um, last week, I actually sold... Uh, all of those silver mylars that I pulled out of keyboards, um, I didn't get much for them. I got like, you know, like, I think it was like $15 a pound. But still, I mean, 
I couldn't find anyone that wanted them to recover the silver from them because it takes so much time because there's so many mylars. You have to use nitric acid. It's it, it, it's a pain, and the price of silver. I mean, it's decent, but not really decent enough to try and mess with that for me. But uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I sold a bunch of just gold-plated junk, um, like a 10-pound box. Got a hundred bucks for it. Um, a lot of like the CPUs that I'm pulling out of these servers that I that I get. Uh, a lot of them just aren't worth anything anymore. So they're, if they're worth five bucks or less, I'll try and sell them in a lot of like ten or more. If if they don't sell, they get sold as scrap. Um, and those move pretty quickly. Um, and then server cards, those are surprising, and it's uh, it's fascinating when you're pulling these things out of, of, of server blades. You know, you get this this card that I don't even know if you can see that. Yes, that bin has some dust bunnies in it, sorry about that, but I clean everything off before I ship it. Um, so you, you get these cards and you just, it's a matter of looking up all these little numbers that you find everywhere uh, on eBay to find the exact same card and you see what they're selling for or what they have sold for, not what they're currently selling for. And then you list them and like with some of these cards I'll get like, like with these I have like 40 of them. So you post one listing with a quantity of 40 available and then you're done. You, you just sit back and wait for the sales to start ringing in. And with those, I use a lot of these USPS small flat rate boxes. They're free. Um, you know exactly how much it's going to cost to ship. So it, it works out great. And that's a basket of clothing that my daughter is trying to sell in Mercari. Which is not something that I've dealt with, but... You know, the apple's not falling far from the tree selling stuff online. So that's it. So, so I think I'm saying so now more than um. Uh, sorry. So again, thanks for watching. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, share, hit that button, do all that fun stuff. Make sure you check out eWaste Ben. Uh, and a big thank you for him for his concern. Of that last video that I put out wondering you know, what the heck happened to me halfway through the video. And uh, thanks to Big Stack Decasting as well uh, for um, you know, sh showing my copper ingots on his video. Um, and you know, I'm just amazed that customs took that long. But anyways, so thanks for watching. See ya.